there was a human genome sequence. Uh, and to understand that, you have to understand what a human genome is or what the genome is. Uh, a genome is the set of genetic instructions that go to make up an organism. And we've all got one, whether you're a fruit, fruit fly or a television presenter or a blue whale or a pine tree. And uh, as you said, it's the, it's the blueprint for life. Our genome has about 3 billion bits of DNA in it. So those individual letters, if you like, the individual building blocks, chemical building blocks that have got the C, A, G, T initials. And the Human Genome Project that was announced as finished, at least to a draft level in 2000, had about 150,000 gaps in it. And the reason for that had to do with the way that the work was being done, which was all about patching together little tiny bits of information, a bit like putting together a jigsaw puzzle and you needed the edge of one piece to work out where the next piece would go. Uh, but there are some types of DNA where there's a lot of repetition, where it's quite hard to do that piecing together. A bit like a jigsaw puzzle that's got a whole lot of blue sky in it, and it can be quite hard to be sure where the next piece is supposed to go. And so uh, 150,000 sounds like an awful lot, and it is, but a lot of that was in places where probably the more important bits, or at least as we understood at the time, um, were not located. And within a few years, they'd got it down to a few hundred, but some of those gaps were quite big. So this research that was published yesterday in a series of, of very important scientific publications is about, as you say, filling in those gaps. And there have been some really quite remarkable discoveries made as part of that work. Well, how significant are the results of these studies? How big a breakthrough is it? How excited are scientists about this? Oh, I think there's quite a lot of excitement in the field. Uh, look, part of it is just about understanding who we are. So to have a full understanding of the human genome, or pretty close to full understanding at least of what's in it, uh, is really about understanding ourselves. There have been some specific discoveries. So we had thought of ourselves as having counted the human genes, but this group have discovered at least 100 new protein coding genes and many more sequences that are probably quite important for the function of the genome. Uh, and they've also discovered some stuff about uh, the amount of different variation in copies of different genes. So, for example, there's a gene that's thought to be quite important in differentiating us from animals like chimpanzees. Uh, so things that have changed quite a lot in the time since we diverged from chimpanzees. And we knew that there were multiple copies for one particular gene, but they've discovered a whole lot of variation between individuals as, as part of this work. And as we go along, I'm sure we'll discover more and more in these gaps in what, what people call some of the dark matter of the genome that will help us understand how we form normally, how humans develop and how we've evolved, but also might be quite important in understanding human disease. When you say they've discovered, how exactly have they discovered it? How has the technology advanced in recent years? There have been a lot of changes, and some of that has been about the capacity to do a lot of genetic sequencing quite fast. But the difference between what we could do before and the technology that has enabled this work is all about the length of the bits of DNA. So when we do DNA sequencing um, for most applications, you're talking about maybe a string of a few hundred pieces of DNA. Um, and for most purposes, that's fine. But when you're talking about regions where there's a lot of repetition, it might be quite difficult to be sure. So supposing there's a, a sentence, a, a segment of DNA that says the dog was brown. And, uh, and you, you read the dog was brown, the dog was brown, dog brown, um, and, uh, and it can be quite hard to be sure whether you've just read the same thing over and over again uh, or whether there are actually multiple copies of that sentence. And so if you can read a very long string, you might find that that sentence, the dog was brown, is repeated 50 or 100 or 1,000 times. But in order to do that, and it might be that sometimes it's reversed and sometimes there are bits of it chopped off. Uh, that kind of detail you couldn't possibly, uh, you couldn't possibly have, uh, have found without the ability to look at very long strands of DNA as one continuous piece. And one of the things that they've discovered is that in amongst a whole lot of the dog was brown, the dog was brown, the dog was brown, all of a sudden there might be something really important, some nugget of information, uh, a, a new gene, for instance, that, that was disguised by being hidden in amongst that repetitive stuff. So it's really about that. And there are two particular technologies that they used 
uh, two different companies, PacBio and uh, Oxford Nanopore, make different machines that have got different strengths and weaknesses for this kind of work. And they use those in combination in a particular special kind of tissue sample. Uh, and so these were the main things that, that made it possible to do this. I'm sure it's very complicated, but you make it sound very simple indeed. Can you give us some examples, some practical examples of the implications of the findings? How do they impact us, as you were saying before, in discovering ourselves and the diseases that we carry? Well, as I referred to, part of it will be about understanding evolution. If you haven't got a full picture of the genome, you can't really understand how it's changed through evolutionary time. We don't know yet whether any of the new genes are important for human disease, but it'd be quite surprising if none of them were. So one of the things that we're doing quite routinely now is what's called exome sequencing, where we read the sequence of all of the known genes that we can, we can easily read, uh, or what we call whole genome sequencing, but actually we're not reading the whole genome, at least not understanding the whole genome when we do that, for the purpose of diagnosing disease in people who've got a wide variety of different genetic conditions. So a really common indication for this kind of testing would be where there's a child who has been born, unfortunately, with physical malformations or has problems with development, learning and development. And we use the technology for making diagnoses. Before you can do that, though, you have to understand the relationship between a particular gene and a condition. You have to be sure that a fault in that gene will cause that particular condition. So it may well be that, uh, that some of the genes that have just been discovered will turn out to be important for human disease, just as many of the others that we already knew about um, are. So that will be an area of future research, I'm sure. Why has it taken some 20 years to get to this point? And do you think it's going to take another 20 years uh, for the next major achievement? I mean, look, I know it sounds like a long time, but really it's astonishing what's happened in these last 20 years. Uh, to go, so the Human Genome Project cost about 3 billion US dollars and took 13 years. And that was, it's been estimated that in 2000, if you had $100 million and a year or two, you could sequence one individual human genome. So already by then it was getting cheaper, not cheap, but cheaper and faster. Now it's possible to sequence an individual human genome uh, in a couple of days if you're in a, in a big hurry and it, it only costs a few thousand dollars. So that's a really dramatic change. Uh, it, it's a huge change over these 20 years. And, uh, and these technologies that enable us to read very long strands of DNA have been around for a few years, but their application has been coming along. Um, and, you know, these guys have not just done this overnight. This is years of work that's gone into, into these discoveries.